Hello, I am Fernando Gomez Sancha from Madrid, Spain. I would like to thank the CAO as well as uh, Jorge Gutierrez for the invitation to discuss prostate enucleation, holmium, thulium, thulium fiber, or green laser. What is the best alternative? These are my disclosures. When, when a patient is going to have an operation, he normally wouldn't ask the doctor, doctor, what scalpel are you going to use to perform my operation? Uh, more likely the patient would say, who is going to do my operation? What will he do? What experience does he have? And uh, we are living in a time where the tool is becoming more important than the surgeon. And I think that is probably wrong. And I would rather be operated by a good surgeon with a lot of experience with, uh, I don't know, maybe not my favorite tool, uh, rather than a someone without experience with a very good tool. So this is just a reflection to start. We have a plethora of options of uh, laser consoles that promise uh, to provide the best uh, experience, the best uh, abilities to help us enucleate uh, BPH patients. And uh, I'm going to try to reflect about it. If, if you look at the literature, most published studies are providing a very low quality of evidence. There's few direct uh, randomized comparisons. There is, of course, different variations of uh, surgical technique. Many groups uh, publish their initial experience. And uh, sadly, expert opinion is the lowest quality of evidence available. So let's try to discuss certain aspects that I think it's important uh, for people to understand and uh, let's see what uh, we can do uh, with all this. We have um, the knowledge that uh, the effect in prosthetic tissue of a laser is going to depend on its absorption coefficient in hemoglobin and water. For example, green light is a high affinity for hemoglobin. But it can travel through water for meters, whereas holmium and thulium, and uh, lastly, thulium fiber have a higher affinity for water and these are lasers that you can use, for example, within the ureter to break a very hard uh, stone. Uh, so uh, uh, this is going to reflect on the tissue effect we get when we do a nucleation. A nucleation, anatomical nucleation, has demonstrated to be a safe, established alternative to TRP and simple prostatectomy. And it can be performed with different uh, tools, bipolar, energy, monopolar, different lasers, we're, we're discussing lasers today. But uh, apparently when you remove the whole adenoma, we get the good uh, durability, the excellent recovery of the urinary function that patients experience, and maybe the selection of the energy source for endoscopic enucleation is going to be a matter of choice. Let's start with green light. You know that green light has, as I said, high affinity for hemoglobin. It provides excellent hemostasis when it's used for vaporization, and it's recommended uh, for the treatment of BPH, especially in the treatment of high-risk and anticoagulated pa patients. There have been different uh, generations of green light lasers. There have been different types of fibers, which has made the interpretation of literature even more difficult, because some of the papers at the beginning uh, do not reflect what you can get with a newer laser, and it, it all gets a little bit confusing. The truth is that vaporization was quite slow at the beginning, and it got better and better with the different generations of lasers providing the chance to do a better vaporization effort. But still doing big glands was a challenge, and we uh, described a, a way to do an in-block enucleation. The three-lobe classic technique with green light and with the green light fiber is not so not so nice as the in-block technique. And um, we used the, the side firing fiber, the 2090 fiber, special scope with blunt tip for mechanical dissection and the settings of 80 watts for cutting and 20 watts for coagulation. We used very little energy to perform this procedure and it requires more solution at the end. The procedure starts by marking the white line, this um, line that separates the, the apex of the adenoma uh, from the sphincter. And we saw that this strategy actually 
was very good to prevent post-operative temporary stress incontinence that uh, has been observed with uh, the classic uh, three-loop technique of enucleation. And that's because the, the mucosa of the sphincter is preserved. So it, it really taught us a lot about the anatomy and about the anatomy of the sphincter to perform this and block enucleation with green light. There's a recent review from Italy where there are some groups uh, doing um, green light enucleation of the prostate with the published evidence. And again, this is another demonstration that when you do an anatomical enucleation, irrespective of the tool, you're going to have uh, good results, uh, relatively fast procedures uh, with uh, a lot of tissue extracted, 60, 70 grams, and uh, very nice uh, results and very low rate of incontinence. This is a video showing the uh, white line already marked and how the tip of the scope is used to develop uh, the anatomical plane and uh, following the interface between the capsule and the anoma, the surgical capsule and the anoma. And then the laser would be used for hemostasis and for cutting of the fibrous uh, adherences between abnoma and capsule. So this was the, the way to perform uh, green light nucleation, a very nice operation, but quite difficult when the plane was not uh, easy. Right? In a patient with prostatitis, sometimes uh, with history of prostatitis, it could be difficult to develop this plane. Also in the smaller glands, the plane was not so properly developed. And um, that's why in, in my experience, I, I decided to switch to, to, to Holip. Tulium Yak, the classic Tulium uh, has uh, shown to be a very good laser as well, but it emits a continuous uh, source of laser energy. This, this uh, stream of energy uh, provides the Tulium laser with excellent cutting properties and very good hemostasis although it's not a very good laser for stones. Now there are some pulse uh, lasers that can emit pulses and there are some papers where they can break certain types of stones, but in general, it was used for uh, enucleation. And it has been recognized by the AUA as a nice option to HOLIP, and they are both recommended for the treatment of uh, BPH. The initial uh, technique described was the thulium vapor uh, resection of the prostate. So uh, cuts were made into the prostate and little chips of tissue were uh, taken out similar to TORP, a little bit slow procedure, but a nice introduction for people to get used to, to using the laser. Later on, they started to try to replicate uh, the classic three-lobe enucleation, which was the TUVEP, the thulium vapor enucleation. But uh, the problem was to remain in the proper plane a very expert surgeon could do it, but the laser energy dissection uh, made it difficult. So people would remove three theoretical lobes, but they would uh, probably leave uh, BPH tissue behind. So it was not an anatomical technique. Whereas Thulep, uh, the thulium laser enucleation with anatomical uh, with laser support, with anatomical follow following of the plane described by Thomas Herman. Uh, has uh, shown to be an excellent alternative to HOLEP. Uh, there is a mechanical dissection of the plane and the laser is used for coagulation as well as for cutting, uh, similar to what we did with the uh, green light. There are a number of uh, important studies comparing thul uh, THULEP with TURP, with uh, bipolar enucleation, with open surgery. There's uh, some meta-analysis published um, and for example, this paper, uh, who, which is uh, published by the enthusiasts of uh, Thulium, uh, they defend uh, this, this uh, operation and this uh, tool as an excellent tool that uh, carries very little bleeding that it can also be used uh, apparently in anticoagulated patients. So if you look at how the tissue interacts with energy, there is a nice uh, cutting effect uh, this is a surgery performed by an expert. And also the hemostasis is good, although there might be some carbonization of the tissue. You see, there is a need to do mechanical dissection to, to find the proper plane because the laser itself 
cannot find the plane. So it has to be the surgeon with his instrument, which uh, will mark the anatomical landmarks, and then the laser will be used for cutting and uh, coagulation. So a nice option, but there are, as we will see, other, other alternatives. The new thulium fiber laser is this, the new kit on the block. It has a continuous or pulsed mode with a large range of energy, frequency, and pulse shape settings. It provides, uh, it, apparently it's a very good tool for, for, for stones. And of course, companies always try to push uh, their devices to, 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 to as, as a useful tool for other uh, procedures as well. And this is how uh, this laser initially was used for stones and then uh, they explored uh, its use uh, for BPH. It has excellent cutting and hemostatic pro properties on prosthetic tissue, similar to the current, uh, uh, say, classic uh, tulum. The laser generation mechanism is different than the, the typical solid state lasers, where there is a laser medium that is ex excited by a flash lamp, and two reflective mirrors, and the, the optical resonator will give uh, energy. This, this classic solid state uh, lasers that they, like the tulium, uh, classic tulium, the classic holmium, are big boxes. They pr produce a lot of heat and they need a big uh, cooling system, whereas the tulium fiber laser is going to use a fiber uh, of uh, silica uh, with uh, tulium elements that will be excited by a dial laser and the production of the laser energy is going to be within this fiber. So there are smaller boxes, they, they generate less heat, they allow to use the smaller fibers and they have this super pulsed mode that seems to be very good to um, uh, fragment, not fragment, but uh, pulverize uh, stones. It's a young laser, there's uh, not so much evidence published for enucleation, they call it thuflet, uh, thulium fiber laser, laser nucleation of the prostate, but uh, whatever they gets published seems to be in the line of all the publications that uh, refer to anatomic and enucleation. So it's, it's a good technique irrespective of the energy source. And if you look at the video here, you can see how the cutting properties are good. The hemostasis is excellent, but again, the laser is not developing the plane. It has to be the surgeon who describes, who, who, who decides where the plane is taking place. And despite some people say that there are some bubbles and there is some uh, effect uh, similar to what you would expect to see in Holmium, I think uh, they are uh, fooling themselves, uh, as I will explain later on during this presentation. So if we go, now to Holmium, uh, we know the classic uh, Holmium laser, but there's been a new revolution of Holmium, the pulse modulation. Uh, this pulse modulation consists on uh, using two consecutive pulses and it improves the cutting and the coagulation properties of this laser, provides an excellent first pass coagulation. So when you dissect the plane, the plane is coagulated. So you don't need to do a lot of hemostasis. Uh, which uh, reflects in faster procedures and the quality of hemostasis has improved and that is allowing to do ambulatory HOLEP, which is quite an achievement uh, because we can treat large glands in, uh, in patients who can then go home uh, some hours later. Also the guidelines, uh, both in America and Europe, recognize uh, that HOLEP has level one evidence, uh, it's durable, it's safe even in, in anticoagulated patients. It's cost effective because it allows to use, uh, to, to be used for, for stones as well. And it's recommended for the treatment of BPH of any size. I'm going to explain the concept of peak power because this is the main difference between the holmium and the tulium uh, counterparts. The peak power is the instantaneous power of a single pulse. So if you emit a pulse of a very high uh, energy of 10,000 watts for 100 microseconds, you're going to be emitting one watt. You know, the rest of the second is going to be empty without pulse, but the one watt is the average uh, power. 
So what happens if we emit this pulse differently? We emit a 2000 watt uh, power, but only for 500 microseconds. So the rest of the second is going to be empty, but the pulse characteristics are going to be different. And we will still be using one watt. And this is what marks the difference between home impulses and tool impulses. Home impulses have an enormously big, uh, uh, or can have an enormously big peak power, whereas thulium uh, has a different uh, way of producing these, these pulses, and they don't reach this uh, uh, very powerful uh, peak power. So this is the, the homing working area. It's very different from the thulium working area, as you can see. Uh, all, both uh, thulium and thulium fiber lasers do not reach this peak power of the pulses of holmium. And as you know, when you, you produce one of these pulses, there's going to be a sudden heating of the water and the water will go over 100 degrees. And this super hot water will have to change very fast and it does it violently. And it produces a cavitation bubble and a pressure wave uh, with a photoacoustic uh, effect. That's why we, we can hear the blasts and it produces a pressure wave. And this pressure wave is going to allow us to dissect the prostatic tissue. You have different effects, homium laser. Uh, if you're too far, it doesn't do anything. The mechanical, the pressure wave is going to dissect the plane. If you get a little bit closer, you can get both effects, coagulation and mechanical, but this was a little bit difficult with the classic holep. And then of course, if you get closer to the tissue, this disruption of the tissue is going to produce a cutting effect. So. You see, we have different uh, kinds of tools for the job. The homium is going to allow us to dissect the plane, uh, to peel the, the plane properly following the anatomical uh, plane, whereas thulium and thulium fiber are going to be a little bit more tricky to do this, this dissection. As I said, the experience of the surgeon will compensate for this, but uh, it's interesting to know. And if you look at the two commercially available pulse modulated uh, homium lasers, we will use the virtual basket uh, from Quanta system, which has two consecutive pulses. As you can see, first pulse and the second pulse will travel through the first one, uh, allowing the energy to reach a little bit further. And also with MOSES 2.0, which has been um, optimized for uh, BPH tissue, there is a first pulse and then a second pulse that uh, travels far away and uh, also prevents the fiber from being degraded uh, during the procedure. So it's very interesting new effects. What is the advantage of pulse modulation? We're going to have an excellent dissection of the anatomical plane. If you spray the energy uh, in the interface, in the line of dissection, you're going to see how the plane opens, uh, very beautiful, but then uh, the energy is going to reach enough uh, to provide an improved uh, first pass hemostasis. These uh, enhanced cutting properties and enhanced uh, first pass coagulation uh, are going to result in better visibility, faster procedures, increased safety. And I think, because we haven't proven it yet, it, it will make learning HOLEP much easier because the visibility is better, there's less, less bleeding. And it also very interestingly allows to use very small scopes. There have been a number of publications already, both with uh, MOSES and uh, Virtual Basket, and they both uh, seem to highlight uh, the, the positive feedback uh, that we, we get with this uh, laser. This is the MOSES in action. And as you can see, when you go against the line of dissection, it opens up the plane beautifully and it provides a nice coagulation, nice first pass coagulation of the uh, uh, prostatic capsule. And this means that you're going to be able to dissect uh, concentrate on the dissection of the plane and you will not need uh, to be um, uh, worried about uh, keeping hemostasis uh, during the procedure. Sorry, I'm going to try to pass. Yeah, this is uh, the experience we have published as an abstract uh, during uh, this Congress. And you can see that we were able to remove 56 uh, grams of tissue in average of 32 minutes uh, for enucleation and morselation time. We had very little complications, very little bleeding, very little catheterization. And we were able to increase our ablation rate when we compared it to, to classic HOLEP 
almost double uh, our ablation rate to four uh, grams per minute and reduce the hemostatia time in, in about five minutes. Sorry, I, I missed a slide. And this is the experience with virtual basket, which is uh, similar. Uh, we treated uh, prostates uh, with an average size of 80 grams and surgical time of 40 minutes, also with little uh, in, the, in the way of complications and uh, very nice, very nice uh, results. So in conclusion, endoscopic enucleation and atomic endoscopic enucleation of a prostate is feasible, safe and reproducible, different energy sources. Greenlight, Greenlight is a versatile tool for BPH. If you master both vaporization and uh, enucleation, you can do ejaculation protection. So it's an interesting tool. Uh, thulium and thulium fiber are excellent cutting and coagulating tools. So if you are skilled and you can perform enucleation, you can perfectly uh, do enucleation with these uh, lasers. And then holmium and especially the pulse modulated lasers are an excellent dissecting tool. So it will be up to you to, to decide which one is going to be your surgical knife for enucleation. I think endoscopic enucleation is the natural evolution of TURP into something better, more complete, more definitive, more anatomical, and it should be widely adopted. And there is now uh, technical and surgical technique improvements that make it more attractive than ever. And I am happy if there is uh, some question. Thank you very much for your attention. All the best.